So for um, number four, it's saying that when a particle is located at a distance x meters from the origin, um, a force of cosine of pi x over 3 newtons acts on it. And then it's asking us how much work is done um, moving the particle from 1 to 2, and it wants us to interpret uh, by first moving it from 1 to 1 1.5, and then from 1.5 to 2. Okay, so work is equal to force, uh, force applied through a distance, right? It's... Um, so let's think about what our distance is and what our force is. Well, first our distance is going to be from 1 to 1 1.5 and then from 1 to 0.5 to 2. So that's pretty easy. But however, our force, if we can see here, our force is cosine of pi x over 3, where x is the distance x meters from the origin. This means that our force is going to change, right? So it changes as a function of distance. And so um, this is not going to be exactly the the graph of it, but we can kind of approximate it as being something like this. This is how our force behaves. And so I can't really multiply this by distance because every single at every single point this force changes, right? So this means that I have to um, I have to cut it up into little pieces and then sum it up together. And this is the process uh, of taking the integral, right? That we're summing up all these values. So actually our force, uh, our work is going to be the sum of all these little pieces of our force, so the sum of um, cosine of pi x divided by 3 times a little distance, right? A little distance is going to be a little dx, because that's going to be our x-axis. So it's like we're taking the force, we cut it up into these tiny little pieces across the x-axis, and then we're summing all of them, uh, we're summing all the forces times distance, so dx. And uh, we're gonna we're gonna do the work first from one to one point five, and then from one point five to two. So let's just take this indefinite integral first, and then we'll um, we'll evaluate the boundaries. So um, this indefinite integral is gonna be sine of pi x over three, and then divided by the argument. So divided by pi over three, and we're gonna do this from. Um, let's just put from A to B for now. And now I'm just going to clean this up a little bit. And so this is 3 sine of pi over 3x divided by pi. And first we are going to, oops, first we're going to take this from 1 to 1 1.5. So when we do this, we're going to get here 3 over pi. That's a constant, so we pull it outside. And then we're going to get uh, sine of sine of 1.5x divided by 3. So we're going to get here sine of 1.5 um, divided by 3. That's going to be sine of pi over 2. And then minus, let's see, minus sine of pi over 3. We just put, put in the 1 there. Minus sine of pi over 3. And so let's see what this is. This is going to be 3 over pi times sine of pi over 2 is just 1 minus uh, sine of pi over 3 is going to be root 3 over 2. So that's the work from 1 to 1 1.5. And now, um, now let's do this work here from 1.5 to 2. So we're going to have 3 sine of pi over 3x all over pi, and this is going to be from 1.5 to 2. So once more, I'm going to pull the 3 over pi outside, and then we're going to have sine of 2 pi over 3x, right? So sine of 2 pi over 3, and this is going to be minus, minus sine of um, 1.5 pi divided by 3. So sine of 1.5 pi divided by 3 is going to be... Um, sine of pi over 2. Okay, and this is going to give us, let's see, that's going to give us sine of 2 pi over 3, uh, 3 over pi outside, and then sine of 2 pi over 3 is root 3 over 2, and then minus sine of pi over 2 is just 1. Um, and so we can see here that the total, total, work is going to be the work from um, from 1 to 1.5 plus the work from 1.5 to 2. And if we if we look at this, the work from, um, that's going to be 3 over pi, right? I'm just going to 
put the 3 over pi outside, and then I'm going to join these two. So 3 over pi still goes outside, and then I have 1 minus root 3 over 2, and then plus root 3 over 2, and then minus 1. And so we can see here that this is just going to be 3 over pi times 0. And the reason that it is um, the work is going to be 0 is because basically we're doing the same amount of work um, in e equal magnitude, but in opposite direction. Right, and this is because our uh, our force, our cosine, it goes like this. It goes up and then down and then up. And so, what happens here is that we the the force is going to be the same um, in magnitude, but in opposite directions, right? And so, the work is going to cancel itself out. So, the total work that is done is just zero because um, the it goes in opposite directions. And so, that is it for number four.